I'm Yongji and this is my teammate Ching Yi. Today we're going to talk about psychoanalysis and film spectatorship. We will be using the round window as our film example for this seminar. So before I start, I'd like to tell you what are the content for today's seminar. First we have the synopsis of round windows and then we'll talk about war reserve. Worrisome is the main theme for this presentation and also the film. Then we will have Sigmund Freud's three part of personality. And then, Apprentice Theory and last is Lacanian Theory. So, the synopsis of Sven Window is directed by Alfred Hitchcock in 1954. The main protagonist is a famous photographer. His name is Albert Jeffries and he will be referred as Jeff. Uh, in the following presentation and also in the film. In the video I'm going to show you later. It's played by James Stewart. So this photographer, he has been taking a break from his job because of his one broken leg. He has a full leg cast on his left leg. And then that is the reason why he has been spending all, uh, almost all of his time on this wheelchair and sit in front of the red window. And then out of boredom, he can't move freely because he's injured. He tried on a wheelchair. So out of boredom, he started to develop a habit to watch at his neighbors secretly. There are only two persons who always go to visit him, which is Stella and Lisa. Stella is his visiting nurse, is played by Tama Rito. And then Lisa is his beautiful girlfriend, played by Grace Kelly. So this beautiful girlfriend, she's very des desperate to get married with Jack. He loves Jack so much, he always confessed to him, but Jack has been rejecting her. Even though he admits that she's perfect. Why? Because he thinks that Lisa and him is totally from two different worlds. Lisa has been living in the safe and sound environment. He is fam she's famous, she has a well-paid job, she always has the chance to wear latest fashion designs of dresses. And yeah, she loves luxury. But Jack, he prefers adventurous lifestyle. He likes to travel around, especially those dangerous places, so that he can take amazing shots of photos. And he thinks luxury is not important. Anyway, um, back to the storyline. At the beginning, Actually, the Stella and Lisa, they always advise Jack you shouldn't work at your neighbors. It's not, it's not right. But gradually towards the end of the film, both of them actually join Jack the warrior together. Now I'm going to pass to my teammate, Ching Yi. She's going to talk about what are the neighbors that Jack is observing. So, uh, here's a few like, neighbors that Jack is observing through his home. Uh, the first one is Miss Dolly Hart. So she is the one who practice, always practice like having dinner with imaginary people. The next one is the lovely couple and songwriter. And we move to the next part, uh, which is there is a, like, a couple who sleeps on fire escape and they own the dogs. And also an old woman who wear hearing aids and makes crutches. And there's a two important neighbors that uh, Jack always wore at, which is Miss Torso and Tower Couple. And Miss Torso is a talented ballerina. She always like wear sexy outfits and practice the dance move in room. And um, Tower Couple, that's that's like the couple. Mrs. Tower is a sick wife, and uh, she she always like stay in the bed and like to make her husband like. And one day, like Mr. Torward is missing, and Jack suspects that Mr. Torward murdered his wife. Then he began his investigations and tries to convince his friend uh, Doyle, Doyle, who is like a detective, to trust there is a murder case happened in his neighborhood, which is in the house of the couple. So, uh, among all the neighbors, Jack look at. Uh, Miss Torso and Tower Couple the most. Uh, do you guys know why? You guys know. Miss Torso is sexy. 
He watches and observes things from a distance through his camera lens and captures the images. Even though his leg is injured and he is trapped on his wheelchair in front of his house rear window, he still performs his photographer habit by turning his spying object to his neighbors. No matter how many times Stella and Lisa try to warn Jeff that spying at his neighbor isn't the right thing to do, because the action of flipping Tom is against the law, yet their words still unable to stop Jeff from being a warrior. The New York State sentence for keeping time is six months in the workshop. Oh, well, those are not the same. Take those binoculars out of the case and bring them here with you. Sure. I can smell it. Oh, it's a shot. If you could only see yourself, what's the problem? Sitting around looking out of the window at your time is one thing, but doing it the way you are with binoculars and wild opinions about every little thing you see is, is disease. What do you think? Jeff worries the desire is unstoppable, especially his violence towards Mr. Torrent and his new gaze towards Miss Torso. There is a common between Jeff and Lisa relationship and Torrent couple's relationship. Both women in their relationships want to control the men. Mrs. Torrent is a nagging wife who always tries to throw Mr. Torrent into an argument. Lisa tries to control Jeff's gaze focused on her outstanding self-display. According to Belton, both men refuse to commit themselves to the women who seek to control them. Ah! Through voyeurism, Jeff unconsciously identifies his repressed desire with Mr. Torrent. Mr. Torrent kills the women that want to control him in order to free himself. Jeff consciously knows he can't do it to Lisa, so he keeps his surveillance on Mr. Torrent to find proof of Mr. Torrent has done the crime he repressed. According to Freedian theory, Mr. Torrent manifested the aid of Jeff in a love relationship. Now, let's talk about Jeff male gaze towards Miss Torso. Jeff is the example of scopo fellow when he is looking at Miss Torso. Miss Torso is the object that targeted by Jeff to be looked at for erotic purpose due to her sexy appearance. One of the highlights of Laura Mulvey, 1975, Visual Pressure and Narrative Cinema is female is cornered to be looked at as because of her strong visual and erotic impact from her appearance. Miss Torso is displayed in reveling outfit most of the times. The actions of practicing dance move in sexy outfits is very sedative and attracts Jeff who has very stiff behavior gaze at her. Therefore, Miss Torso manifests the sexual desire, one of the it of Jeff in the film. Can you repeat? 
What what are the what are the things that make you relate yourself to the character or the stories? Things are uh, it's mm. just the feeling that I have the same situation with the spec. Okay. The other guys in the film. Yeah. Okay, no, I I'll explain to you why. So it is because the cinematic apparatus that creates the real reality side. So the projector, the screen, the darkened hall, the mise-en-scene of the film, like the settings of the story settings of the character that make it, they give you the sense of transcendence to spectator, that make you can experience the, the, the from the actually from the imaginary things. Okay, understand? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so what a character that is used by Jack to watch his neighbors? Oh, I shouldn't show you. <laughs> what a character? Do you, do you notice in the video just now? I now kill that. Okay, anything else? By the killer and? Camera man. Oh, good. By the killer and camera. So these two characters actually represent Jack's eyes looking at his neighbors. So we apply the apparatus theory. He, the apparatus, the camera man and the eye. on his wheelchair and then he hide in the dark to worry of his neighbors from a distance. And then the real angle is like the cinema screen to Jack. Isn't it very similar? You have similar experience with these situations? It is similar to us when we are watching a film in a cinema. When Jack is watching his neighbors, the spectators are actually watching at him behind the cinema screen. So the spectators are also performing with worries of that peep into Jack's uh, private life. So from here, uh, we can we know another notion of worries uh, that is introduced by Christian Max. Cinema viewing process is worrisome, and there is always a distance maintained between the screen and also the spectator. And then the cinematic scenes cannot return spectator gaze. For example, Jack unable to return our gaze when we are watching it. Jack. Jack do not know, does not know we are watching at him. He can't return to our gaze. And then now I'm going to talk about the last part of the theory, Lacanian uh, theory. Okay, so this is the last last theory that we're going to go through here. So Lacanian theory. Lacanian theory mirror stage is by Jacob Lacan, and that's three important register of order of human reality, which is imaginary, symbolic, and real. And what is Sinfire of Desire? Sinfire of Desire is a film, it's a mirror that reflects imagination, which suggests completeness for a spectator. Spectator is put at the imaginary center of the projection to undergo the process of identification, and spectator signifies all desire, more complete self that are reflected by the character in the film. And for example, where we know is a mirror that reflects Jack's desire when he is trapped on his uh, wheelchair. And I'll pass to Nanami for the conclusions. Yeah. Okay, before I end this, give me the keywords that you remember that you have learned from this seminar presentations. More reasonable. Okay, and then? Erotic. Erotic, okay. And then? Mirror. Mirror, yes. And then? Okay, good. Anything else? Okay, thank you. So, from this feedback, I know you guys have uh, understand what is worrisome and then the super ego, ego E, because it's related to the erotic, the sexual desires, and then the mirror stage, and also the, of course, the, to be looked at, and also the sexual um, desires thing, the feminism things. And then not to forget the apparatus theory, okay? Psychoanalysis is very important for us to analyze, analyze a film. Is for us to explain the needs, desires, and also the new female positioning that are reflected in the films. So this is a wrap up.